All right, man. So we got something different today. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are um, familiar with 1090 Jake. And if you guys are not familiar with 1090 Jake, well, 1090 Jake is a YouTuber that did some time in the pen, got out, changed his life, started making uh, um, prison genre, genre on YouTube, right? Went from that, then he flipped it to basically showing you that your favorite rapper ain't 100 like he say he is you feel me so he's the king of paperwork on anybody that's claiming they're tough and did some time he's quick to call your bluff and tell you nah nigga you snitch here's the paperwork so now it seems like some it, look, it just it just look like some uh some chicago rapper can't catch a break so now we got those um Lil they they Osama. For an incident that happened back in New York, I'm not sure when, but it was a while back ago. But he left his switch in the car in a Uber in a Uber's car, and you know, one thing led to another. <laughs> and that's why we're here. So let's check it out. Y'all, y'all rocking with me, and for this video, y'all see the title. Let's get right into it. We don't, get, we don't play with no you. regular nigga. <laughs> <laughs> on my butter. We do it. Don't play my slot. I'm folks great and we'll guess like that. We do it. Don't play my slot. I'm folks. Buddy just walked around Buddy just walked across the stage to get his diploma. He's already in the street told. My buddy done already picked his major. Nah, for real, look at this shit. Nigga still got on his cap and gown. And his diploma in his hand. What a Glock switch. Great, a real guess like that. Hold on, hold switchy. The yeah. No talking. No cap. No talking. Switch game. Three switches right here. And I put the bitch. That, that's just oh. enough right there. That's <laughs> enough. One, two, three, that's well, enough. Man, the Glock switch has become a staple in hip hop turning handguns into fully automatic hole punches. But a lot of misconceptions surround the switch, and in this video we'll be- And the worst part is about this goddamn switch, is the fact that you get caught with this switch, bro. That is an automatic felony, bro. Fully breaking it down. On November 7th, Chicago rapper Lil Zay Osama stood in front of a federal judge in Brooklyn, New York. It was sentencing day, and Zay had pled guilty back in May to one count of possession of a machine gun. On September 29th, 2022, an Uber driver picked up Zay and several associates from a hotel in Manhattan. The driver would notice Zay was holding a firearm during the ride. Dropping them off at a recording studio in Queens, the driver saw they left the gun in the vehicle, so the driver called the police. NYPD would locate the 40 caliber Glock 22 with a switch loaded with one round. Why he had to use that kind of car? In the chamber and nine more in the mag. When asked, the driver would identify Lil Zay Osama as the one who possessed it. This statement alone was enough to build a Fed case. Who get it? Who getting no money must be talking about the opposition. What's happening? Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. What happened? We're going to short it all up. We're going to short it all up. What is going on? We're going to short it all up. I'm the man. He's being detained right now. So back up. I'm just... Do you get him on phone though? Yeah, you got anything on you? I'm on live. I'm on live, sir. U.S. attorneys would submit a letter requesting to keep Zay in federal. Why do people feel like just because you tell them the cop that you are live right now I mean it don't change anything? I feel like you telling the cop you live right now. That just listen, they gonna put a smile on their face like, mm, oh, you live, huh? All right, bet. custody, labeling him a danger to society, and even quoting some of his lyrics, one of which stated, 
Just got a brand new Glock with a 50 and a switch. The then 25 year old had already been convicted of criminal trespassing, reckless conduct, three counts of robbery, aggravated battery, and aggravated discharge of a firearm. Zay would be held in custody and only released after paying a $350,000 bond. In January of 2024, he'd officially be indicted on one count of possession of a machine gun and one count of possession of an unregistered firearm. Everyone expected this to be the rapper's demise. Fast forward to November 7th, Zay, having pled guilty to this is Michael. He makes $15,000 per month from YouTube without having to show his face, script, edit, or create any of the videos. The machine gun and getting the second charge dropped was only sentenced to 14 months in federal prison, followed by one year of supervised release. Only having to serve 85% of his sentence, Zay will be home in less than a year. Immediately, he'd be accused online of snitching, solely because of the fact that he didn't get a decade or more in prison. So how did he get such a sweet deal? First off, 90% of people don't know what the fuck they're talking about. A switch without a gun is still considered a machine gun. A switch and a gun is clearly a machine gun, and a machine gun under federal law is punishable by up to 10 years in federal prison Meaning you can get anywhere from supervised release, aka probation, to the max 10 years, depending on a few different factors. But as soon as the internet hears 10, they assume you'll just get 10 years for a switch. During Zay's plea deal, the courts calculated his offense level as 15 and criminal history as 2. The guideline range for this level scored out to 21 to 27 months in prison or just over two years. Zay's lawyer would counter with a seven month prison sentence, highlighting how Zay's felony convictions came from when he was a juvenile at just 15 and 16 years old. As an adult, he'd only been convicted of two misdemeanors. His lawyer would speak on his Chicago upbringing and how at only 14, Zay was shot in the chest. His lawyer would also cite multiple cases in which defendants were sentenced to less than the guidelines. Taking it a step further, his lawyer would point out the unlivable conditions they had to endure while inside of MDC Brooklyn as well as the unlivable conditions. I ain't even gonna lie. Mm. My lawyer looking like that? Hello. Well, Conditions they had to she endure. Got that wide head inside too. of MDC Brooklyn, as rats and roaches flooded the facility, inmates would suffer indefinite lockdowns, imposing solitary confinement like conditions, furthering mental health issues, and leading to multiple inmates being killed. Zay's lawyer, Don Florio, was lawyering her ass off. Zay was in New York to perform at Rolling Loud. He was on his way to an interview when a firearm was left behind and that firearm wasn't linked to any previous crimes. Zay's lawyer would again take it a step even further, pointing out rappers are often targeted for their wealth, and just 17 days before Zay was arrested, rapper PNB Rock was shot and killed during a robbery for his jewelry. The lawyer would top it all off with the statistical fact that according to the Sentencing Commission, between 2015 and 2023, there were 49 individuals in the Eastern District of New York sentenced for firearm-related offenses, with the median sentence being only 19 months. Zay had already served 8 months total fighting this case, and another 4 months from a state case, meaning he's already been incarcerated for 12 months. Now, the U.S. attorney would argue back highlighting Zay's DNA was found on the weapon and request he be sentenced to 27 months in federal prison. They'd also try to assassinate his character, speaking on Zay's 2023 arrest, following a high-speed chase in Illinois, where police found a Glock 29 with a laser extended magazine and a switch, and a Glock 19 with a 50-round drum and deface serial number. At the time, Zay was wearing a $90,000 necklace that was allegedly, according to the U.S. attorney, stolen during an armed robbery in New York. At no time was cooperation ever brought up in this case. At no time did Zay ever point the finger arguing the weapon belonged to anyone else. 
And in no time did his lawyer or the U.S. attorney highlight a 5K1 or any other factors that would have reduced his sentencing by cooperating. In the end, Zay would receive 14 months in prison, one year of supervised release, and a recommendation that he be housed in FCI Thompson, closer to his family in Chicago. With the internet claiming Zay must have ratted, he'd take to his Instagram story addressing the rumors saying, stop believing everything you hear or see on the internet. You really think you can get 30 years for a switch? Hell no. I don't care what state you in, facts. But switches is dangerous and carry three or four years, maybe less, depending on your background. But they become a problem in a lot of cities, so it might be worse for you. Different strokes for different folks. I caught a blessing. Don't look at my situation and think you need a switch, cause it can end bad for you. Stop playing with snitching for real. Have 1090 Jake look up my switch case. Now not only did Zay get a sweet deal, but he's also signed to Warner Records, could afford a $350,000 bond, and a New York top lawyer. So to sum it all up, if you ain't rich, don't tow the switch. Nah, I'm just playing. To sum it all up, because of his weak criminal history, right? Because they're not using anything that he hasn't been convicted for. He might have open cases, cool, but whatever. Adult convictions, misdemeanors. Juvenile shit, felonies. But it's been a long time and they're trying to portray it that he's changed his life and become an artist and got a record deal and he's obviously worth a lot of fucking money. And then the guideline range that the lawyer was able to highlight to the judge shows, look, 49 people got off at around 19 months. What can we do for my client? This is clearly a case of money talks, bullshit walks. If you walk into a courtroom federal estate without a fucking lawyer, you're fucked. If you walk in there with a top lawyer, a celebrity lawyer, a highly six-figure paid lawyer, you're gonna get an entirely different type of fucking deal. And a lot of y'all are forgetting machine guns and silencers are classed in the same way, right? Pretty sure it's the same punishment for a silencer as it is for a machine gun. Y'all remember T.I. got caught with all that crazy shit and he didn't get a whole lot of time. Everyone assumed he snitched and the commercial on TV about tips didn't help. But in reality, nobody ever got paperwork that showed he snitched. And there's nothing saying Zay snitched aside from the fucking people on the internet. And it's like I personally told him, you can't beat the internet. But stay away from switches and guns that ain't yours. Higher security. PNB Rock, rest in peace. He died with a gun on him, tucked in his waistband. They just came out with the. Yeah, I think I was just about to say they came out with, um, a little uh, Basically they came up with more evidence To basically say that he was actually Set up by one of the employees Because his food delayed it for like what 40 minutes The body cam footage He died with a gun Didn't even get a chance to pull it out And it was over with So think twice Think smart Get security It's 1090 Jake Let me know y'all thoughts Alright man, I hope y'all was rocking with the um video. If not, shit, I'ma still get at y'all on the next one. Y'all be safe, stay out of the way, hit that like, comment, and follow your boy on Twitch. One.